Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, we are going to continue with our daily current affairs. And today's topic I've chosen on Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sambhada Yojana. So for this topic, we are going to talk on the new updates on this as we have already covered the uh, scheme, this scheme in our government schemes, which is which has been uploaded before. So if you guys haven't watched that video, you can go back to that video and watch it in detail and then you can come back. So this is gonna be an extension or an update of that video, okay? So my name is Hansa Nora Sangma and I've been your mentor for the bar exam and I've done my bachelor's honors in horticulture and I've also done my master's in hematology and agriculture, right? So without uh, wasting any more time, let's move on with the video. And before going further, you can also subscribe to our channel if you guys are new and you can press the bell icon for an update from all the other exams which is very important for your other government of exams as well all right and if you've liked the video you can also press the bell icon and you can uh, share with your friends whoever is giving the exam right so uh, so this uh, topic which is on or the scheme which is on the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sambara Yojana this is related to fisheries and aquaculture okay and it was first mentioned during the 2019 to 20 budget so I'm not going to go very in detail we've covered this topic right so I'm just going to talk a bit about it a summary about the rough introduction about it all right so this PMMSY it is a scheme which was done to bring about about a, a blue revolution in India. When we uh, look into blue revolution, blue revolution is related to fisheries and aquaculture. Okay, and um, this will be done through more of a sustainable as well as a more responsible development in the fisheries sector in India. Okay, and this are going to be done under two components, which is mainly the central sector scheme, which is known as the CS, as well as the centrally sponsored scheme, which is CSS, okay? And this scheme, it is going to be implemented during a five-year period, okay? So that is the implementation period, uh, duration, right? And from financial year of 2020-21 to 2024-25, to okay? So this is going to be the duration right from this year till this year all right and this the nodal ministry which is concerned with this scheme or this yojana is ministry of fisheries uh, animal husbandry and dairying okay and this scheme has been approved by the cabinet on may 2020 right so this are some of the brief overview of this uh, yojana all right and now let's move on to another uh, slide which is on the main, uh, main aims and objectives of the scheme, right? So the first one here is harnessing of the fish poten fisheries potential, right? So this harnessing of the fisheries potential will be done uh, in a more sustainable, more responsible, exclusive, uh, inclusive, as well as in a more equitable manner, okay? So it's going to be a whole run uh, development in the fisheries sector, right? And the second one here is to enhance this fish production as well as to the to increase the productivity and this will be done through expansion intensification and uh, through new meto uh, new methods and new technologies all right and the third one here is modernizing and you can also strengthen the uh, value chain all right so and this will be done through more of a refined form of post harvest management as well as the quality improvement of these fishes right so post harvest management and quality improvement these are the very major factors which include which helps in the proper supply chain value chain right and if the production is done if you have lots of if you have produced lots of fishes but if you don't take care of the post harvest management then all the production will be go and will go into vain right and the third one here is sorry the fourth one here is in doubling the farmer's income so this is a very important point under the scheme where we will be doubling with, with which will aim in doubling the fishers and the uh, fish farmers income right and it will also help in generating more employment okay and the fifth one here is social physical and as well as the economic security for the fishers as well as the farmers okay so it will give all this three round development security for these fishers as well as the fish farmers the last one is a proper regulatory framework through robust 
fishery management. So these are some of the major aims and objectives of this scheme, right? So as you really try to understand, and this will become very easy for you all to remember, okay? And so these are some of the main aims and objectives. And now let us look into one question which I have written here, right? So it is very, this question is very important, okay? So I, I uh, I'm guessing you all should be knowing this by now, right? So what is the contribution of fisheries in Indus agricultural GBA, okay? So the options given here are number A, which is 10%, number B is 7.2%, number C is 3.7%, number D is 8.5% and number E is 12.3%. So guys, if you guys know the answer, please drop in the comment section, right? So that I'll be able to know whether you guys are knowing this answer. So if you, if you guys don't know the answer, don't worry, I uh, will be solving the question in the next slide, okay? And the right answer for this is 7.2%, all right? So uh, basically, fisheries sector, fisheries and agriculture sector, they contribute to about 1.24% to the Indus, total India's gross value added, okay? So that is 1.24%, all right? But if you're looking into the agriculture GVA, then it contributes to about 7.28%. And this data is from 2018 to 2019, which is the latest data given out by this ministry, all right? And India is also one of the largest fish producing countries in the world, right? And it basically shares about 7.58% to the global production, right? So these are the things that you guys need to remember, right? And this fisheries and aquaculture, it is a very important source of food, nutrition, and as well as income and livelihood to millions of these fish farmers and the fishers, right? So they are the backbone for their normal daily uh, income and their livelihood, okay? And it will basically provide like livelihood for more than 20 million fish farmers in the uh, in India, right? And fishes is also one of the most affordable rich source of animal protein and it is considered as one of the most healthiest options to reduce hunger as well as mal malnutrition, which is very important in our country as well, right? So this is something about the Indian fishery sector, okay? And now let us look into this graph. The annual growth rate of the fish production in India is uh, right now, which is uh, the, according to the latest data of 2018 to 19, which is about 9.28%. And if you look in to another, uh, to the previous year, right? Um, let me just... So if you look at here, to so the previous year, which is about 10.4%, so we can see that there was a decrease in the growth rate of this fish production in India. So uh, the other data are not as important. So what you can do is uh, try to remember the previous year data, which is 2017 to 18, and to uh, 2018 to 19, okay? So these are the two stats that you guys need to remember, these two data, right? And there has been a decrease in the the growth rate. So remember that, and it was from 10.4, and right now that according to the latest data is about 9.28 only. All right, so this is something that you guys need to remember. You can jot it down in your notepad as well. You can pause the video and jot it down, okay? And now we're gonna move on with this scheme. So in the recent update on the scheme, the, there are two updates. The first one is the Minister of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring, Giriraj Singh, he launched this first edition of Fisheries and Aquaculture Newsletter. And the name of the newsletter is Matsya Sampada, okay? And this is published by the Department of Fisheries, which is under the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring, okay? So this is one of the updates on the scheme. And the second update on the scheme is that they are, the Minister also released the operational guidelines for, uh, of, for this scheme, which is Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sambara Yojana, right? And now, let us move on with the slides and let us talk about this newsletter, all right? So what are the visions, what are the main aims, right? This newsletter, it will serve as a very important medium or the source for disseminating the information, the intent, as well as the initiators of this scheme, okay? 
the scheme and it will be done among the stakeholders, especially the farmers, uh, fish farmers, fishers, youth, as well as the entrepreneurs of all across the country in India. And how will it help? And this newsletter, it will help them assist and more like a gift, it's more like a guidebook for them, okay? So it will help them and it will assist them and facilitate and ease in doing their business, all right? So this will be like a guidebook, okay? This newsletter is going to be some sort of a guidebook for the fishers, the fish farmers and the youth or the entrepreneurs who are in this industry or in this sector. All right, so that thing you need to remember and it will also showcase the best practices, the new technologies and the new methods in the fisheries and uh, aquaculture which are undertaken by this uh, normal fishers, fish farmers as well as all the entrepreneurs, right? And they will also include the latest development of these technologies as well as the success stories of these people, all right? So this is the main aim or the main vision of this Matsya Sambada, all right? And now let us look into the two main aims the first aim is to uh, reach out right so the first aim to reach out to the stakeholders especially the fishers the fish farmers as well, and the entrepreneurs through various means of communication okay number second here is to inform and educate okay so this is a very important thing even if all the and through this, it will be like a source for them so that they will be learning the new technology developments and the new research that has been developed. And this will be like a chain for them to understand and they can implement this technologies and this development and their own business, right? So these are the main two aims, all right? And this newsletter, it will be published on a quarterly basis, all right? So the first quarter of, uh, and it has been published in the first quarter of this year, which is for the year of 2020 to 21, all right? So these are some things on a rough introduction about this Matsya Sampada, all right? And now let us look into another update, which is on the operational guidelines, all right? So operational guidelines for this PMSY. So they have published this whole booklet of his operational guidelines. I took out some of the important points that is very important from the exam point of view, all right? So the first thing is here that we need to look is in, in the implementation schedule, all right? So the total investment is about 20,000 crores. So this is the first and the largest investment that the government has taken up for the fisheries and agriculture sector right so and we have already talked about where this two will be going with the total investment the so first it'll be going to the centrally uh, sponsored component which is the CSS right so they'll be getting about rupees uh, 8, 18,330 crore and the another one here it's a central component right so in the central component is about rupees seven a team that sorry uh, rupees 1720 crore okay so these are the two sectors and under the central the sponsored company we also have a central share we have a state share as well as a private beneficiaries okay so these three these are not that important but try to remember the last three central share their share is not that important uh, to know the actual uh, data of the amount, uh, actual amount, but I would suggest you all to at least remember the uh, share of the centrally uh, sponge for the CSS as well as the CS component. And now let us look into a bit more detail. I'll just explain it to you roughly about how this is going to happen. Okay, so the first thing here that you need to understand is that first two implementation. Right, uh, it will be done through two implementation, which is a central sector scheme which is known as CS and a centrally sponsored scheme. So on the central uh, sector scheme, the two things will be direct beneficiaries. And another one here is that the whole entire project or the cost will be done by, will be, uh, done by the central government, which means 100% funding okay another one for the uh, whenever it's for the direct beneficiaries right so it means that it can be individual or a group of activities uh, which are mostly done under but undertaken by the entities of the central government which includes the national fisheries development board okay which is known as nfdb okay try to remember the um, 
the full for the full forms of all these NFDB, they might ask questions in this way as well. So uh, the full form of NFDB is National Fisheries Development Board. Okay, and so for this, the central assistance will be up to forty percent, and that is for the uh, general category okay and if it's for SC, ST or women category then they will uh, it'll be about 60% share all right and now for this centrally sponsored scheme uh, they have two things again under this we have a non-beneficiary oriented and we have a beneficiary oriented okay and so these activities will be done under three uh, broad active heads okay so the main aim for this will be uh, or the activities or the components would be first foremost in, enhance the production and the productivity okay and the second one here is infrastructure as well as the post harvest management and the third one is a proper regulatory framework and a proper fisheries management so these are the three things that you guys need to remember all right and now this for this non beneficiary oriented so the it'll be shared between the central and the state okay and if it's for the beneficiary oriented the same thing as the centrally where 60 per, 60 percent will be for the SCST women category 40 percent for the general category and this uh, the financial assistance for this cs and css will be shared for uh, different states they have a different categories under this as well okay for the northeastern Malin states will be 90% by the central and 10% by the state share. If it's for the general or the state, then it's going to be 60% central share and 40% state share, okay? And if it's for the union territories, right, then it will be 100% central share. So these are some uh, summary of these whole implementation schedule, all right? And now let us look into the investment, all right? And for this investment, uh, the competence here are central sector scheme, which is we have a total. Uh, I would suggest you all to remember only the total, all right? The total of this. So the total in crores will be 20,000. Uh, and 50 right and for this central share we have 9407 and for the state central share it's around 4880 and beneficiary contribution would be around seven uh, five thousand seven hundred and thirty three sixty three okay so these are some of the investment uh details of the investment but try to remember only the total because uh too much in depth they won't be asking in too much of depth all right so just knowing the uh, total and the share of all this uh, central state as well as the beneficiary is uh, sufficient all right and now let us look into some of the uh, implementing agencies under this so uh, who will be implementing these the scheme all right and so this scheme will be implemented through by the central government and its entity which is the national fisheries development board and the second one here is on the state on the union territory governments all right as well as their entities and the third one is state fishery departments uh department boards every state has a dip, uh, every state has one each state depart uh, fishery development board right so even that will come under this and the fourth one is any other and implementing agency which has been decided by the department of the fisheries so these are the four uh, agency four main agencies under which it'll this scheme will be implemented all right then who, and now uh, we'll talk about the uh, beneficiaries the first one is the fishery the fishers right and we also have fish workers fish vendors and we have fishery uh, fisheries development coordinate uh, coordinate corporation sorry corporations and we have self-help groups right it can be uh, the joint liability groups in fisheries sector okay and we also have fisheries corporates fishery federations entrepreneurs as well as the private firms will be included in this fish farmer producer organization which is known as ffpos and and we have all the sc st women differently able person as well as the last one here is the state government and their entities and this would include the state fishery development board and the um, and lastly central government and its entities okay so these are the ones these are the beneficiaries under this scheme all right so um let's move on to the last subtopic which is on the major impact so how uh, this 
scheme will have an impact on the fishery sector, fishery and aquaculture sector. Okay, so here for this, it's going to be like a major impact, right, of this uh, of the scheme PMMSY, right, and this will also include uh, employment generation potential as well. Okay, so these are most likely the outcomes of this scheme. So the first one is production, right? So the fish, the fish production, they have estimated to that it will be likely enhance from uh, thirteen point seven five million metric tons, which is the current twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen, to twenty two million tons by twenty twenty four to twenty five. Okay, so there's going to be almost a double increase uh, in the fish production. Okay, the second one here is in the annual growth about uh, this fish production. So um, average annual growth of the fish about 9% in fish production is also expected. And number third here is in the, uh, in the contribution of the fishery sector in the to the agriculture GVA. So the current is 7.28, right? And it, uh, they want to increase it to about 9% by the year 2024 to 25. All right, so this uh, this data and these stats are very important from exam point of view. Okay, so jot it down as I'm speaking, right? And the fourth one here is to double the uh, export earnings as well. So from the present, it's about 46,598 crore, and they want to increase it to about one like crores by 2024 to 25 and we also have the physics one which is on the enhancement of the productivity so uh, they want to enhance the productivity of the aquaculture from the present national average which is about three tons okay and they want to increase it to about five tons per hectare and this is for the aquaculture sector all right and now let's move on to another one now the slides, which is on the reduction in the post harvest losses. So uh, the post harvest losses right now is about twenty to twenty five percent post harvest losses according to the latest report, and they want to reduce these losses to about only ten percent. Okay, and the another one here is in the doubling uh, the income. Right, so this has been a very important uh, point for the uh, in all the schemes related to agriculture to double the farmers' income. So they are aiming to increase the income of the fishers as well as the fish farmers with this. And the, the lot, and we also they also want to generate of about fifteen lakh direct uh, gainful uh, employment opportunities as well, right? As well as they want to twice the number as indirect employment opportunities through the supply and value along the supply and value chain okay and they also want to enhance the domestic fish, fish consumption from about which is the present is about 5 kg right so they want to increase it to about 12 kilo per capita okay and the last one here is to encourage of a most of like a private investment and as well as the facilitation of the growth of all these entrepreneurship in the fishery sector. So it means that they want to have more entrepreneurship and more youth coming up help in this fishery sector. All right, so these are some of the major impacts that this uh, scheme is likely going to have on the fishery sector. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope all the points are clear. If it's still not clear, then you guys can always drop in the comment section, right? And you can ask for all the doubts and if you have any queries or, or any confusions, then you don't hesitate to reach out to us and we'll always, we'll always be there to help you out, right? Before going, please do subscribe to our channel and you can also press the bell icon for the further notifications. And uh, if you've liked the video, do hit the thumbs up button and do share it with your friends and we'll be meeting for the next session.